A forward is tasked to do a lot of things like create goals, score them themselves, among other things. But there are some things as well that we definitely need to learn as strikers. And that's why in this video we're going over soccer movement tips for forwards. Hey, what's up guys? It's Dave here from Simply Soccer where we're helping you to improve your game and stand out on the pitch. And on this channel, we release daily soccer tip, technique, and training videos all designed to help you do just that. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever we do videos or live streams. Striker position is an incredibly important position because it's the one task for getting a lot of goals. But if you're not doing certain things right, you're not going to score much and you're also going to make things difficult for your teammates. And that's why in today's video we're going over the forward movement you need to be doing in order to be an effective striker. So let's get right over to the whiteboard where I'm going to give you some examples of the movements that forward should be doing in order to be more effective because the fact of the matter is if you're standing still as a striker, you're not going to get the ball that much, you will not score many goals, and you'll just make the game much more difficult on your team. Alright guys, so we're just going to go over some forward movement tips real quick to kind of give you an idea of what a striker should be doing as far as runs. Now, first and foremost, a striker um, movement is incredibly important and can absolutely change the way you play, the goals you score, and the space that you create for teammates. Now, the first thing I want to mention when talking about the movement of this guy right here, the striker, is you need to be in constant motion. What I mean by this is if you're standing still, if you're right here and you're just kind of occupying that space and not moving anywhere else, you become a very easy person to mark. You become a center back's dream because you're easy to mark. If you want to become a center back's nightmare, which you do want, you want to terrorize the defense, be in constant motion between center backs, between right and left back, moving along the back line all the time, looking for spaces, looking for weak spots, looking for things to exploit, because by doing this, you start making the back line a little nervous. Luis Suarez used to do this very well for Liverpool when I used to watch him play for Liverpool. He would move across the back line all the time, which would mean these guys, if they weren't communicating properly, they would get burned because they'd be like, who's supposed to be following Suarez right now? And they had to, throughout the whole match, communicate, because if they don't, Suarez is suddenly... This guy thinks he's supposed to be covering Suarez, gets pulled out of position by him, and then all this space is there for Suarez to turn into, or for another teammate to exploit, or Suarez will pick off the ball from one of them, or something like that. So being constant motion, not only in an, in an attacking way, as in like trying to find space for you to exploit when your team has the ball, but also defend from the front. This is very important, like when the when he when the center backs have the ball and he's passing over here, you know, even if it's a jog, move towards the ball. They pass it back, you know, get close them down. Don't give them time on the ball. You know, a center back would love to have as much time as possible on the ball, but if you put them on their pressure, a lot of center backs will get nervous and will give the ball away even at the professional level. So, make sure you're in constant motion not only when you're looking for space to exploit when you're on the attack and trying to make runs in behind, but also being constant motion, defending from the front. Um, this is how you'll become a very effective forward with your movement. Um, and this is the big one, I think, first and foremost, is constant motion across the back line and making these guys nervous. Make their job hard. Make it so that they make mistakes. This makes it easier for you to score goals and for your team as well. Make it so they give up possession. Make it so they are always wondering, where did he go? Right? Because one second you could be here, next second you're over there. And they have to be communicating very well to keep picking you up. So one second you're there, bam, you're over there. You're making those runs. And, you know, just casually moving into that space or sprinting in that space, whatever works, um, make sure you're moving around this back line because, again, if you're still, it's not going to work. Next, make looping runs. Make a lot of runs in behind. You know, a lot of times you're going to make runs and not get the ball. That's just a fact of the game. Um, you can't worry about that. Don't make allow that to discourage you from making runs because it only takes one good run. It only takes one good run and one good ball played in behind for you to have that chance to score. And it only takes one goal sometimes to win a game. So if you're constantly, the more runs you're making, the more chance you have of getting the ball in a goal scoring opportunity or in a goal scoring for a chance. So one way I like to make runs and a lot of players do this is to make looping runs. And there's a few reasons for this. One is it drags the defender kind of away. But two, it allows your teammates to know that you're making the run. 
Because if you just make out of nowhere a run like this, and your teammates even a second late, you're probably going to get called offside. Now, sometimes you will want to do that, like on the counterattack, when your teammate's looking for that pass and you have space. Like, for example, if actually this was the situation, you can kind of see all the space that's here and the ball was here. If you can quickly get it in there, you might as well make that pretty straightforward run. But a lot of times, you're going to make it, need to make a looping run. So, like, if you're here um, and you want to loop into this space, sometimes you'll need to make a run more like this or looping around like this. It's not always going to be straightforward. It's not going to be a straight line every single time. Sometimes maybe you'll pretend like you check and you'll spin out. And that's a really popular one, especially if you're a hold-up player. You can check to the ball. So let's say this guy has the ball. Check to the ball, draw this defender out, and you can either create that space for your center attack and mid or other player, but you can do that and then quickly spin. And if he's marking you too tightly... You might just be able to get away from him and have this player lob the ball into you. So that's another run that's available to you. But always be looking for runs that you can make as you're constantly in motion. Look for spaces that you can exploit and be very deadly about it. As in, don't hesitate to make that looping run. Don't hesitate to exploit that space. Don't hesitate to make that corner run if you need to. Always be looking for it. Look for those pockets of space as well. This is another important thing for a striker, kind of like right here in this line. Look for pockets of space that you can find to receive the ball. Now, a lot of times your center attacking mid will be tasked with doing this, but let's say he's over here and he's being covered. You can possibly find the pocket of space in here, um, link up with your center attacking mid, and get in behind. Because especially if you're a lone striker, you're going to be asked to do a lot of hold-up play. So you need to cut back and check back. And we've already gone over that you can do that and then loop in behind. That's a good run to make. But another thing this does by you and one a, a pair of players I think that does this very well is Deli Alley and Harry Kane. They have such a good understanding. Is Harry Kane will check to the ball. He'll make that run. But by checking, someone has to follow him. And because he's on the on a center back, usually the center back will follow him. And this will create the space for Deli Alley to loop in behind. And they'll lob it over to him or some other center midfield player who makes the run. So your movement will not only be for you to get the ball, but it will also create space for your teammates. So realize that you, you can create a lot of space for your teammates in pockets or in behind by your movement. And again, if you're standing still, you become easy to cover, but you're also making it more difficult for your team because you're not opening up space. Again, this constant motion will help gaps in the defense um, show up, which will create space for your teammates. It's not all about your runs. It's not all about you getting in on goal. Sometimes you need to do it so your teammates can get in, in on goal. And you're all trying to win, so make sure you're doing that so your team can benefit. So you can check. Um, you can get the ball here and then distribute it. Um, you can check as a dummy run, which allows your players to get in behind. You can check, and this is one of my favorites again, is checking and then immediately spinning out um, and exploiting that space, that's always a good one as well. So these are the basic movements that I think a striker should be doing. Again, there's many different runs you can make. You know, on the defensive side, there's corner flag runs you should be making to relieve pressure. You know, there's weak side runs you could be making where you kind of casually loop here and then exploit the space there for if the ball's over here and you want to get played in behind like that. There's a lot of runs to be making, but if you are a striker, the thing to really remember here is that you need to be, one, making make a lot of runs. If I can get this to work, make a ton of runs. Make a ton of runs. And the other thing is being constant motion, because that makes you hard to mark. Again, you won't get the ball every time, but by making a ton of runs, you make it more likely that your player can play you in um, but you also drag out defenders you also create space for your teammates and that's as important as you getting in behind as well now I'm not saying make silly runs obviously make intelligent runs you'll learn which runs runs you should be making in which situations the more you play for example if you're here and the ball's here you're not going to be making this run are you but you need to be making constant runs so you can make 10 runs and never get the ball, but if you get the ball in the 11th run and score, it doesn't really matter, does it? You still were effective. So here's these are some runs that I definitely recommend you start trying. I think the most important takeaway is make sure you're in constant motion and you're really dragging center backs out of their position and creating space. Um, and just 
the other thing is just make plenty of runs, right? The more runs you make, the more intelligent runs you make, which you'll learn over time which those are, the more chance you have of getting in behind, creating space for your teammates, and ultimately scoring goals. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments um, if you are someone who does move a lot as a striker or have you found that you are not moving as much as you should be. Let me know which one you are in the comments. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Make sure you share this video with your friends and teammates. Like it as well and subscribe if you are new. I'm going to have two videos come across the screen like usual that you can continue or use to continue to watch and learn. And make sure you come back tomorrow at 5 p.m. for a brand new video. Thanks, guys. Remember, this is Simply Soccer, where we're helping you to improve your game and stand out on the pitch. I'll see you all on the next video.